All right, so when we're thinking about these coupled systems of autonomous differential equations, we want to start thinking about trajectories in that phase plane so we can kind of understand the behavior of these systems as we kind of, you know, think about these as dynamic models of these populations or, or whatever they are uh, through time, right? So we have this example that we just went over of the predator-prey model where I gave some values for the different, uh, you know, growth rates and predation rates and death rates for the predators and the prey. So to review, the prey are governed by this differential equation here, which is the rate of change of x, the population of prey, so the number of, of prey there are, the rate of change of x over time is equal to uh, plus x, right? So it's a positive growth rate with growth rate one, minus 0 0.001 x times y, where y is the number of predators. So this is the predation term, right, that describes uh, basically how many prey are going to decrease due to getting eaten by a predator. And then we have this coupled autonomous equation that's coupled to this one, which is the uh, predator population. So y is the number of predators. So the rate of change of the predators is kind of the opposite for this predation term, right? Instead of dying off due to predation, they actually get to grow because of predation, right? They get to eat and survive and, and have offspring and whatnot. And then without eating, they die off at a natural rate of minus one times y, right? So this is kind of the per capita death rate of the predators. So the way this system works is the prey have this kind of natural growth rates. So they want to grow exponentially, but they're being predated on, right? They're being hunted by the predators. The predators naturally would die off unless they hunt successfully. So there's this kind of trade-off between the prey is growing and then eaten by the predators, and the predators only growing if they catch prey. Otherwise, they die off. So it's not like the predators can completely take over because then they'd have no prey and they'd die off. So they have to eat just enough prey to survive, but not too many that they kill off the prey. So the last time we looked at the null clients of this system, right? We plotted those in the phase planes. The phase plane being the plane, you know, the graph X and Y, where X is the number of prey, Y is the number of predators. And we plotted in red and blue here, we plotted in red, what we plotted was dx dt, right? The x null client, which was places, right? Curves where the rate of change of the prey is zero, right? So either x was zero, in which case x is zero, x is zero here, so this whole thing became zero. So there's no change in the number of prey along that line. Or y was zero, where in that case, this became zero as well when we factored this out we saw that when y is exactly 1,000, there's no change in x. Okay, so that's the other kind of curve of no change in prey. In blue, we plotted the y null clients. Okay. So blue, where d y dt equals zero, right? These were the y null clients. So when x is 1,000, this equation here is zero, and there's no change in y, the number of predators, or when y is zero, right? When there are no predators, there's no growth or decay of predators, they just stay at zero. Okay, and then to find the equilibria of the system, right, we found those at the intersection points, right, because that was a place where both the uh, x had no change and y had no change, right, dx dt and dy dt are both zero at the intersection of my x and y null clines. Not the intersection of x and x null clines because in this case y could still be, uh, you know, could still have some growth or decay here. It won't be zero. Only at these intersection points. So we had two equilibria, one at zero, zero, which we called the extinction state, right? Because both of them are gone. And then another one at 1000, 1000, right? Which we can think of as like an equilibrium or balanced level. Okay. And so we want to kind of think about these in terms of, you know, stability, because that's how we did it for discrete time systems and how we did it for single autonomous differential equations. We thought about the stability of different equilibrium points and that kind of gave us a sense of where uh, solutions to our model would go over time. Here, the stability uh, is actually too hard to calculate because we have to do, uh, you know, we have to find these things called eigenvalues of the, you know, linearized system around these equilibrium. It's, it's kind of beyond the scope of this class, so I won't really go into it. Uh, but what we can do instead is we can plot 
uh, direction arrows in the face plane, which we can follow to find trajectories. All right, so we can plot what's called direction arrows in the phase plane, and we can follow these to sketch trajectories. Okay, so we'll kind of do this um, in a less technical way than we'd like because we don't really have the mathematical tools necessary to do it in kind of the more advanced way. So we follow these to sketch trajectories. Okay. But what do I mean by a direction arrow? I mean, we know based on this phase plane that if we start at a point exactly on a null climb, there's no change in y or in x, or sorry, in if we start on the y null climb, there's no change in y, right? But there could be change in x, right? So here, if I start at that point, if I do an initial condition here on the y null climb, we know that dy dt equals zero, so no change in y, but there could be change in x. Okay, and so we could draw an arrow on this null climb to denote what the change in x is, right? So let's check it. Um, there's different ways you can check this. You can check an example point in this kind of region of interest, or you could just check uh, using an inequality, right? So I'm gonna use an inequality because it's you know more general than just picking a specific point. So let's check dx dt on the y equals zero y null climb. Okay. So dx dt, recall, is x minus 0 0.001 xy. Okay, so it's x minus 0 0.001 xy. So on the y equals zero y null climb, we know that the second term is zero. Okay, so then dx dt is just equal to x which means that it will just have the sign of x, right? So for positive x, dx dt is positive. For negative x, dx dt is negative. Okay, so I can draw that on my null cline. On this y equals zero null cline, I can say, well, for positive x, the change is positive. So I can draw an arrow to the right here. To the left, it's negative. Okay, so I can draw these arrows which indicate how a solution would flow along that null climb. Okay, and then we'll just continue to do this for the rest of the null climb. So let's try this next null climb, right? We'll do the other y null climb. So this is the x equals 1000 null climb. All right, so let's check dx dt on x equals 1000, which is the y null climb, the other y null climb. Okay, so we already know that dy dt is zero, so we won't be going up or down, we can only go across in the x direction. Okay, so if we check it, dx dt equals x minus 0.001 xy on x equals 1000, dx dt, right, we're plugging in 1000 for x, so that gives us minus 1000, 0 0.001 times 1000 gives us one, so it's 1000 minus y. Okay, and so here we'll use an inequality again, right? For y less than a thousand, right? This is going to be positive. But for y uh, greater than a thousand, it will be negative, right? dx dt is negative. So if we go back up to our uh, phase plane, we're looking at this y null line, and we have two clear arrows we can draw, right? We can draw one for y greater than a thousand, which would be above the red line, right? And we said when y was bigger than a thousand, the rate of change of x is negative, right? So x is the horizontal direction. So we would cross this in 
uh, the negative direction. And then when, X, uh, when Y is less than 1,000, right, this calculation showed that the rate of change at X is positive. So we'll cross it to the right below, okay? So what this means is if you start exactly on the y null line, there's no change in y, but we just computed what the change in x was, which will push you off this null line into you know, this space here or that space there, right? And so down here, it will be the same, still to the right, okay? And what you can see maybe is not obvious, but the fact remains that across, when you're on a certain null line, we only change direction on that null line once we passed the kind of intersection with the other null line, right? Which makes sense, right? You can only change from a positive to a negative dx dt by passing through where it's zero, which is the other null line. Okay? So this kind of splits this up into these nice, uh, you know, very divided regions where we can analyze the flow. All right? Let's check the opposite. So we're going to now look on the x null clients where there's going to be no change in x. There will only be change in y and we'll see what those flow directions look like. So let's try that next. So we'll look at first the x equals zero null client. Okay, so let's look along the x equals zero null client, which is the dx dt equals zero line. We'll check dy dt, right? The rate of change of y on x equals zero, which is an x null line. Okay, so let's check this. dy dt, recall, is 0.001 xy minus y. So along x equals zero, right, this becomes zero minus y. Okay, so now we, we can say, okay, well, then this is just dy dt equals minus y when x is zero. So for y positive, dy dt is negative. For y negative, dy dt is positive. Okay, so let's translate those into arrows, direction arrows on our face plane. So we're on the x equals zero line. We're talking about change in y, so up and down. And when y is positive, the flow is negative. When y is negative, the flow is positive. Okay? And so it's going to be positive. Sorry, negative here, because y is a positive number. Negative, uh, sorry, negative y's give a positive flow. Right? So what this means is that if I picked a solution here, starting on the x null line, there's no change in x, so I'm not flowing to the left or right, but there is negative uh, dy dt. So I'm going to flow up towards that equilibrium point. But you'll notice that, you know, if I start, now that I have kind of a, a whole section of this filled out, I can kind of show you what um, solutions might look like, right? You're going to flow in and then out here, and in and then out, right? So the arrows kind of in the middle here are going to be a combination of the two arrows across, right? Because there's no place where it's switching from up to down. So we'll always be going up. Here it's not switching from left to right, so it's always gonna to go to the left. So we're gonna have arrows that look like this. And then in this region here, we'll have arrows that go like that, right? And then they gradually become more flat as they approach this null line where there is no change in Y. Okay, but maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's finish up uh, this last one here. So let's look at the very last null line of the system, which is the y equals 1000 null line, right? So here, let's check dy dt on the y equals 1000 x null line, because this is a place where only y is changing. x is not changing along that null line, so we can only really only have to think about one type of flow at a time. So dy dt, again, is 0.001 xy minus y, 0.001. So on y equals 1,000, this looks like dy dt, 0.001 times x times 1,000 gives me just one. So I get x minus 1,000. Okay, and then this is kind of similar to the other case, where now we just check, well, for x bigger than 1,000, right? 
this rate of change, dy dt, will be positive, right? For x bigger than 1,000, that will be a positive number. For x less than 1,000, dy dt is negative. Okay, so if I throw those down as arrows on my x null line, the flow is only up and down, and what that says is that for x bigger than 1,000, sorry, yeah, for x bigger than 1,000, the flow is up. For x less than 1,000, the flow is down, right? And this is in agreement with the arrows we found here, right? This is still down, this is still down, okay? And now we can finish uh, by filling in the arrows in between these, right? So here it's still to the right, okay? So in this area, it's down and to the right. In this area, it's up and to the right. Here, it is up and to the right, up and to the right, up and to the left here, down and to the left here, okay? And you can see maybe that we're circling almost this equilibrium over here. We're moving away from this equilibrium over here. So this one is clearly unstable. This one, the stability is not so easy to infer, right? We can't really tell uh, based on these arrows whether we're going towards this, away from it, or just kind of circling around it indefinitely, okay? And so from here, we'll have to go on to using uh, more computer-assisted tools. Um, so I'll show you this, uh, this tool called P-Plane, which plots a phase plane. Um, and it uses uh, kind of an advanced version of Euler's method to then salute, to, you know, solve and find solutions for trajectories starting at any initial condition in these phase planes, right? Because the idea is once we have these arrows down that we could say, let's, uh, you know, let's follow one of them. Let's maybe choose green, right? So if I pick a point here, I should be able to follow these arrows, right? And it should tell me where this goes, right? So if I had really nice uh, fidelity about which, you know, what is the derivative value of both x and y at each point, it'll tell me exactly which arrow to follow in what direction. And we'll be able to get a really good sense of where these trajectories are going. But from this sketch alone, we're maybe kind of a little bit in the dark still. All we can see is that we're moving away from this point, right? Almost looks like we're kind of approaching it and moving away. So we can see that this one is unstable. But this one, stability isn't clear, right? It's not easy to tell whether or not we are approaching that point, uh, moving away from it, or circling it indefinitely, right? at least from this kind of level where I haven't really done anything besides check the derivatives at a couple points, okay? So we'll get more into this in the next video.